Jupiter Media presents Avasar Telecasting Global Opportunities Hello and Namaste welcome to Avasar program and I'm, I'm your regular host Sunil Acharya and the program is all about education educational news views and your career Today I'm going to talk about uh, especially why international student could have choose Australia as a study destination uh, to provide the uh, brief information about um, uh, why you study in Australia, why Canterbury Education Group, and uh, uh, how one individual student can choose uh, Canterbury Educational uh, Group's institution um, for their better career. To have all information we have with us, Mr. Gajendra Paul, who is looking after Canterbury uh, Educational Group as a director. Let's welcome him. Uh, Gajendra sir, you are welcome on our show. Thank you. Okay. Especially talking about Canterbury Education Group, would you please elaborate something about it? Canterbury Education Group, by group what we mean is uh, we have put lots of educational products together uh, under the banner of Canterbury and we call it Canterbury Education Group. International students from not only Nepal, around the world come to Australia into four different kind of programs. Some student uh, where uh, uh, primary or secondary education is not good, then uh, those uh, parents send their kid to Australia to study from year one, leading to senior school, which is year 12 here in Nepal. And then many students come to Australia to learn only English. Some students come to Australia to do vocational studies. Vocational can be business, leadership, or it can be plumbing, electrician, so many fields to choose from. And the last, not least, is uh, higher education. And higher education is from bachelor's degree leading to uh, PhD mm -hmm. research. Canterbury Education Group uh, deal into three tiers. We don't have high school. We don't do, do education up to year 12. So once student have achieved year 12, they can have uh, uh, English for those students who don't meet the English requirement for our polytechnics. They don't meet the requirement for English. Uh, we have English Institute by the name of Canterbury Language Academy. We have two uh, uh, polytechnics. We, one is called Canterbury Business College, which is based in uh, Sydney. We have Canterbury Technical Institute, which is based in Brisbane, which is capital of uh, state of Queensland in Australia. And here uh, in Nepal, students have a very hot question is that uh, what is the risk rating of our institution? Both our vocational education institution in Sydney as well as in Brisbane are listed on uh, uh, risk level one, which is the lowest risk. And many students from Nepal are loving it. And that's why we are having uh, increase in enrollment in these two institutions. Other than that, we have two higher education institutions. One of them is uh, University of Southern Queensland Sydney Education Centre. USQ is very well known in Nepal. Uh, uh, we don't own USQ. USQ is owned by uh, Queensland government and they have their head office based in a city called Toowoomba, which is 150 kilometer west of Brisbane. They have huge variety of program, not only in Toowoomba, but also in Springfield, which is close to Brisbane. We are partner with USQ to offer a uh, program which are demand mainly to the international student in Sydney. Uh, so uh, we are their partner in Sydney for last 21 years. We have lots of graduates from Nepal, where we are currently offering four uh, postgraduate degrees, mainly in the field of IT, IS, and cyber security. Uh, the fifth institution what we have is uh, uh, Canterbury Institute of Management, uh, very popular among Nepali students. It's an uh, institute of higher education. Uh, as in Nepal, there are many deemed university. We can't say uh, uh, university uh, in Australia. They call it the Institute of Higher Education. They are accredited by the same body as uh, university, but universities have long history. So at this stage in Canterbury Institute of Management, we are offering Bachelor of Business in four majors, uh, Information Systems, Accounting, Management, and Hospitality. But the good thing is that student can also choose double major and still have the degree in two years. And uh, on top of it, a uh, lot of students uh, wanted to go to regional area. We have a campus in Sydney, and we also started a campus on 24th of May in Darwin, which is very well received by students from Nepal. And you will be surprised to know uh, Nepalese community is the fastest growing community in Darwin. 
Okay, we'll talk about uh, destination Darwin as well. Would you please update something about the post-COVID situation and uh, especially Australia already welcomed international students. They have already opened certain bo uh, border uh, for international students. Well, uh, uh, Australia is perceived to be uh, one of the tightest country uh, to combat COVID. Earlier, uh, they were treated in a wrong way, but no world can see uh, Australia, which also include uh, New Zealand, uh, like uh, fought with uh, the situation, COVID-19 situation in the best possible way. They protected their citizens. They didn't even protect citizens. They also protected interest of all the international students in Australia. So all students, uh, whether they are from Nepal or the rest of the world, when any state was in lockdown, just like residents, students were also receiving COVID uh, assistant payments, institutions were giving them free food, all sorts of help, which whatever was possible, provided by Australia, which was not the case in many other countries. Now, Australia can see that uh, uh, they have lost a lot of money, billions of dollars in this process, and they want to regain it. That's why once Australian population got 80% vaccination, so as per what they planned six months back, they have opened their borders for international students from 1st of December. Unfortunately, just a few hours back, uh, uh, we heard from Prime Minister of Australia, they had to postpone this entry by two weeks, which is, of course, an unfortunate situation. But what uh, we can see is Australian government is preparing well to tackle with this new variant of virus. So within two weeks, they will know how this virus behaves and what kind of uh, isolation is required. So I'm sure they are not going to postpone it any further other than 15th of December. Uh, and students in this market are very, very enthusiastic. And uh, feedback what I had from some of the students is that they don't mind because they are going to a safe country, they have waited for 18 months, they are happy to wait two more weeks. So let's have a talk about quality of education. How Canterbury Education Group is delivering global standard education in their different entities? So Canterbury Education Group, uh, even our uh, motto is quality education for a bright year tomorrow. And we have tried to keep that uh, since 1999 when we started. Uh, a lot of institutions started when we started. Many came, they uh, had to close for various reasons. It could be the quality bodies, ESQA or TEXA, who were not uh, re-accredited them because of quality. And many uh, were bankrupt, they were not able to market their courses in the right way, they were not having the right product. From time to time, we have not only changed our products, we have changed our location. At the same time, we have maintained high standard of quality. Uh, USQ, we have less on us because USQ has many other campuses. USQ have received five-star rating in uh, many areas, including getting the highest starting salary for their graduates. Canterbury Business College and Canterbury Technical Institute are very well known into the hospitality and commercial cookery section. Uh, 2018 and 19, Canterbury Business College was placed among the top 10 vocational institutions. Uh, in Australia. Uh, we had major growth of student uh, uh, since then. Uh, Canterbury Language Academy have also received many awards. Our new institution, which is our higher education, Canterbury Institute of Management, uh, uh, Academic Insight, a leading magazine in the world. Uh, they uh, have uh, surveyed top 10 universities in America and they have also surveyed in Australia. In September, we were placed among the top 10 management institutes for undergraduate studies for subcontinent students and that article is uh, easily available when you search. Uh, I will be happy to share some copies with you later today. Okay, thank you so much. I'd love to know about it. So let's have a talk about the Nepalese community there in Canterbury Education Group. How Nepali students are enjoying the MNs infrastructure and international student care unit? So we Nepali students are welcomed by all education providers with open hands. Uh, we have uh, a long history with Nepal. When we started way back in 1999, the first country what we visited was Nepal. And uh, it has been growing. They have been uh, very less complaints by Australian government, Department of Home Affairs or any institutions. Uh, Nepali students have been very regular in studies. They have been paying their fees own time and they are also maintaining their required course progress. From our side, we also uh, uh, give all sort of possible uh, support. 
if there is a Nepalese festival in any of the three states we work. Uh, recently, there was a festival in Northern Territory. We sponsored that event. Uh, there was a festival in Queensland. We sponsored that. Whenever uh, this thing happened in New South Wales, we also sponsor. We have also student support officer, admission officers, and also our uh, head in Darwin campus. Uh, they are all from uh, uh, educational background uh, and belong to Nepal originally. Of course, they are now Australian citizens, but they are well blended both in Australian community and also uh, they are helping all the new students which are coming from Nepal to study with Canterbury Education Group. Okay, uh, let's have a talk about the destination Darwin, especially nowadays international students are choosing even regional area too. There are many merits and demerits of uh, city and uh, regional as well. So how you highlight uh, Darwin uh, for the uh, special destination for international students? Uh, well, Darwin, uh, many people call it uh, uh, outback city. Uh, the main reason is that uh, uh, it is really far from east part of Australia. But uh, if you look at the growth of real estate in the last five years, especially when there was a downturn, Darwin was the uh, place where uh, property has been growing regularly. The main reason is that uh, a lot of uh, people from other states have been migrating to Darwin, especially the new migrants. And uh, Northern Territory government is also looking at uh, coming up with uh, uh, new plans uh, by which people from different skills, they come, they study in Darwin, and they are able to get uh, Australian uh, post work right visas or they can apply for temporary residence followed by permanent residence easily in Northern Territory as compared to other states. Uh, the skill occupation list for uh, uh, Darwin have lots of occupation. The federal list may not have many areas, uh, so it's faster to get migration there. That's why a lot of people from Sydney, Melbourne and other states are moving to Darwin. Okay, nice. So um, let's have a talk about the scholarship uh, provided by um, Canterbury Education Group. Uh, for the deserving student, what sort of the scholarships are there? We have uh, quite a few scholarships, uh, uh, mainly into the higher education. Our vocational education programs are already lower. Uh, English, we are all, all also offering 30% scholarship. In USQ Sydney Education Center, uh, we were offering a COVID scholarship of 20% to 25%. We have decided to extend that scholarship into 2022, keeping uh, in mind that uh, many parents and many students will be still suffering because of loss in businesses in their respective countries. So our fees for USQ for our master degree is approximately $60,000. After 25% scholarship, it drops down to approximately $44,000, so $11,000 per semester. Whether they go for a master's information system or cybersecurity, they will be paying only 75% of what students normally pay. And this scholarship is based on uh, meeting the entry requirement, which is GPA 2.6, having direct entry without any English program, and then maintaining pass grade. They don't need to have distinction or high distinction. They just have to maintain the pass grade. At Canterbury Institute of Management, both in Sydney and Darwin, for the past uh, year and a half, we were offering respective 30% scholarship for our Sydney and 25% scholarship for uh, our uh, uh, Sydney, uh, for our Darwin campus uh, to all students who opt to study via online uh, mode rather than wasting their time because offshore study from Nepal was treated same as studying in face-to-face -face in Australia for migration purposes or applying for Australian work visa. Now in Canterbury Institute of Management, we are giving further scholarships. Uh, if a student uh, have a GP of 2.6 from uh, Nepal, we are offering them $4,000 scholarship in $48,000 degree program. If they have GP of 3 out of 4, we give them further $2,000 scholarship and they get $6,000 scholarship in $48,000 uh, three-year program. Our fees is already very competitive because if they go for group paid universities, they are charging $40,000 for one year, uh, for three years, it comes to 120,000, but we are offering the whole degree for $48,000 in three years. Especially in his initial phase, you was the international student uh, when you were traveling there in Australia. So how you prospect that Australia is the destination where is the opportunity is boundless? 
no, no doubt, uh, 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 there's no argument about it. Uh, a lot of students from uh, uh, South Asian countries, uh, they do get many destinations. They can go to UK, they can go to Canada, many uh, end up going to America. A lot of other countries in Hungary, China have come up for uh, uh, international education, but Australia have always been number one destination. If you forget about past 18 months, Australia used to be first destination and they want to come back. Uh, and uh, they are coming up in a big way. Uh, they, uh, the Federal Treasurer of uh, Australia have already announced that uh, they are going to double to triple number of migrant visas. They are going to increase the post uh, visa, which is normally two years, to three years for all international students if it is vocational from 18 months to two years. And uh, in Darwin, the visa is already double than what they get in Sydney. So if a student do a bachelor degree in Darwin, so they get four-year visa instead of uh, two-year. So Australian government is looking at all sort of marketing tactics by which they can attract student and uh, bring the uh, lost market back to Australia. Okay. So uh, we are at the end of the session. So anything else? Well, uh, one of the good things about Australia is uh, uh, that the climate is very much similar to what uh, Nepalese climate is. Uh, in eastern part of Australia, uh, if you go to Adelaide, uh, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, which are the more popular destination, uh, we do have uh, all same similar seasons to, to what we have it in, in Nepal. There is winter. And there's summer, but good thing is that summer is, and winters are not extreme as in Canada. A lot of students complain to us they have to uh, clean uh, ice from, from their uh, front and minus 15, 20 is not uh, good for a uh, lot of people, including when their parents try to migrate or uh, visit their children. Uh, and Australia is not too far, very well connected with all the Asian countries and uh, they welcome migrants and they know uh, with migration more and more jobs will be created and uh, uh, even uh, if you look at last 10 years rating for the most livable cities in the world if you look at top 10 cities uh, uh, five cities are from australia so if people are rating uh, that means there is a reason to come to australia and study in australia and get assimilated there Okay, thank you so much. So finally, what's your message to the prospective students and parents, those who are really interested to know best institution there in Australia? Uh, well, uh, uh, Australia is known for quality education. All their uh, accreditation bodies for vocational education, it is uh, Australian Skills and Qualification Authority, ESQA. For uh, higher education is TEXA, uh, which is the Tertiary Education Qual uh, Quality Agency. So they are uh, very, very thorough in terms of maintaining uh, quality checks for education. They also look after the interest of student. If an institution close or if not able to deliver study, they are the one, they have special insurances in place. They uh, divert them to uh, other institution at no cost. So Australia is a really good destination, but only message which I like to give it to you is uh, just look at the curriculum look at the university, look at how much budget your parents can afford. If you go to a provider which is having uh, very high fees and can come and work and then pay that kind of fees, it may or may not happen. But uh, uh, please look at all pros and cons and just make sure that you go to the right consultant uh, who guide you in a right way. Uh, never pay any fees uh, in cash because uh, Nepalese government, you can easily get Australian dollar and direct you can send money direct. We have heard about some cases that people have taken cash and uh, you cannot record that thing. Uh, so everything has to, to be on paper and record so that in case anything wrong happen, you can easily get the refund back in case of you deciding not to come to Australia or if your visa is refused. Gajan sir, thank you so much for your valuable time and thoughts. Thanks for inviting me. Our sir. Telecasting Global Opportunities.